Bob Grill. This is my buddy Mike Cohen. Both work for a, we're both auditors and we work for a large bank in California. Basically what we're going to talk about today is Windows NT and Novell logging from an auditor's point of view. This is a pretty simple presentation showing how to review the logs. Just a real quick administrative thing. After us is Decrypt uh, talking about web application security. And after that, um, it's not in here, but uh, Havlar Flock is supposed to be talking also after um, Decrypt. So and ju just to make uh, one thing clear, feel free to ask questions during this. Uh, try and keep it somewhat informal, and we'll uh, do our best to answer the questions. Okay, this is, uh, the this is the uh, outline of the presentation. First, we'll talk about logging purposes from a generic point of view. Then we'll hit Windows NT specific, hit native tools. Audit we'll look at audit log event analysis and then third-party tools. And we'll do the same for Novell 411. And then we'll look for what events to look for specifically for intrusion detection. Now, I know a lot of you are going, gee, why are you talking about this whole technology? Uh, part of it is it's what we have. Part, another thing is for a lot of you out there, th these are already running in your businesses, and sometimes it's hard to rip this stuff out. Or you may inherit some of this stuff, and you may want to try and make sure it's a little better secure or at least understand what's going on in your network. Okay, this slide uh, outlines some auditing concepts. Again, we're auditors, and we're taking that point of view pretty scary. Audits, uh, so these are the criteria an auditor would look for in a, in a auditing tool. Uh, audit has to be independent of operations. Yeah, and, and just to be clear here, I, I know there's a, a lot of movement or a lot of people say, well, we do security audits when you do security consulting. From, from the, this presentation, when we talk about audit, we talk about traditional audit that's you know, governed by the rules of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, Institute of Internal Auditors, Information Systems Audit and Control Association. Yes. No. CISA, but not CPAs. Certified information. Okay, the next, uh, the next topic is uh, separation of duties. The auditor has to be independent, again, from operations. The auditor comes, comes at systems from a different point of view. They have their own agenda. From, from an operations point of view, you want to keep the, the systems running. We want it to be auditable. Another thing for auditors, very important, is read-only access. Uh, the auditor can't be accused of altering the data to have findings. Authorization, a, a good auditing tool will give different auditors different uh, abilities within the auditing tool. Accounting, uh, it's good to know who did what uh, in the auditing tool. And of course, detecting audit log tamper. Uh, native tools, uh, the first one uh, from Novell is called AuditCon. It comes with Novell. And that, that's an excellent utility. It fulfills all these criteria, including access control. Uh, the administrator of the Novell box cannot use the AuditCon tool. He can actually be locked out. An NT audit, uh, it's really just the basics. It's not really an auditing tool from, from an auditor's perspective. Okay, uh, from a generic point of view, auditing tracks the following type of information. User, ac user actions, resource usage, file, system security, access control, and log in, log off activity. Okay, on this slide, what we're going to do is we're going to look at audit goals, and we're going to cross-reference audit goals to what you want to look at. So if you want to justify resources, I think somebody said louder, justify resources, you want to look at rights to an app, you want to look at uh, write events to an application or the use of print queues, diagnose problems and per, uh, performance problems, you want to look at file opens related to application that is slow. I'm just going to hit the first two on each slide unless there's uh, any, any questions.
Next, uh, what we're going to look at is try to cross-reference the threats to what you want to look at in the audit log. The first uh, type of threat would be intrusion type break-ins using you know, random passwords, crowbar, etc. cetera. Uh, enable failure auditing uh, for logon events, that's obvious. Uh, break-in using stolen passwords. Uh, you want to enable success auditing. Success, aud there's success auditing and this failure auditing, both are very useful. A lot of people think uh, just failure auditing is, is important. So getting back to break-in using stolen passwords, enable success auditing for login and log off events. Again, this doesn't mean that the person using the password you know, is, is the person who owns the password. You can never assume that. Uh, look at, uh, at unusual activity like people logging on in the middle of the night, etc. Now, this kind of brings up a good point, though, is that this is just this is information from say one or one host or however many hosts you have auditing on. This is a key thing to use when you're correlating information, whether if you've got a, a, an extra system to do the correlation automatically for you, or whether you have to look at the logs after the fact and try and correlate between a couple different servers. And a few of you out there are probably thinking that at least with NT that you know auditing for a lot of this stuff does take up resources, and that's kind of where we're saying we're audit in a sense. You know, operations, it's your job to provide us this information. Uh, processing power is cheap. Get more. So just a, just a mindset difference. It's a definite mindset difference. Okay, what to audit again? Looking at threats. Um, improper access to sensitive files. You can audit, uh, enable success of failure auditing for at the file level for, sen uh, for sensitive files. Now we're going to discuss, we're going to focus in on Windows NT, discuss uh, the native tools and some, some DTACs, et cetera. This is what it looks like. Uh, and this is an auditor's dream here. Everything turned on to audit. So this is one, something you want to adjust for your environment, obviously. There's nothing to audit if there's no audit trail. So that's why we. What percentage of resources do you find audit like this day? It really depends upon the environment um, and what the server is doing. I mean, uh, a PDC and a BDC will be different than a server that's doing file and print serving. And, you know, something that's in HR is different than something that's, say, you know, on a manufacturing floor or an R&D lab. So it really depends upon what the server's purpose is and, and who's accessing it for what. What is the uh, default configuration? Off. Everything's off by <laughs> default. All, all auditing is turned off by default when you start up, when you first install. When you server. install Windows NT. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this uh, slide uh, just uh, tell, elaborates on the previous slide, telling you what um, each of the different uh, auditing options does: log on, log off, of course, and there was success and failure. Going back to the last slide, this is process tracking is, is important to auditors, but it's it's definite resource hog. You definitely only want to turn that on if it's if it's uh, if you're trying to prove something, etc. Well, we'd like it on all the time, but <laughs> okay. This is what NT file auditing looks like. It's a different screen than than the this, the other other type, types of things that you audit. This just says the uh, types of things that are audited when you turn on file systems auditing. Uh, for example, on the on the directory level, you can see displaying type, uh, names of files in the directory, displaying directory attributes. This all will show up in the logs. This is kind of a, a laundry list of different things you could audit for, and if everything was turned on, you would you would see these type of events. But the best use for this really is to say, okay. What is it that I want to see? What, is, what events do I want to have an audit trail for? And then based off of this, you can work backwards and determine which events that you actually click in, in the dialog box to audit for. This is uh, how you look at the logs in Windows NT, something called Event Viewer. 
and how do you make sense of it? It does, the, the native tool does have a filter option, but it's, it's primitive. And it also should be noted that um, we'll, we'll show that where the logs are held later, but on it, Windows NT by default, uh, because there isn't a separate auditor from the administrator really, um, somebody that does have administrative authority could, can tamper with the logs. So you, can, you do have to take all that. It's not an auditor's result. dream, no. <laughs> this is a sample of uh, the event IDs in, in Windows NT, and later we'll tell you where to get, where to get these event IDs. My favorite, of course, 529, un unknown username or, or bad password. So let's look at, look at a scenario. Um, this is a scenario when somebody comes along and, and tries to uh, open Notepad. This is with all auditing turned on. So when somebody opens Notepad EXE, these are the, uh, and, and reads a file, a text file, these are the events that will show up. As you can see, the process, op the, the process opens, it opens a text file, and then again, the process is exited when you halt uh, uh, Notepad. Okay, back in the Event Viewer tool, if you would double click on one of those events, you're gonna see more information on the, on the event. And this is a sample of, of what you'd see like for an event 560. Okay. Um, now one thing is that this pre the previous slide here where you've got the different events, if you've got a busy server, chances are these won't be directly in one order after another. You'd have to hunt and find them. And so that's where um, seeing the detail and, and opening up and looking at it because you can look at the, the handle ID numbers and then you can match up which process it was actually that that did it. Okay, we're touching on third-party tools now. Uh, our, our favorite tool is, is BindView, uh, really because it gives us independence of operations. We don't have to be, be an administrator on the box to, to look at the logs, and it has a good query capability. Okay, this is a simple uh, trace. Uh, I, I programmed BindView to tell me an event, look for event 539, bad username or password. And as you can see from the time of date, uh, there's, it's systematic, and you can program BindView to, to look for all of these attributes. This is a sample event correlation signature that you're going to have to uh, look at uh, different boxes. Again, with BindView, you can audit the entire enterprise from one workstation. Uh, with the native tools, you really have to go to each, especially with the NT, you have to go to each workstation. It's very time consuming excuse me, each server. And this, uh, what this shows is uh, a login success, uh, event 539. The same person logging in from different machines at the same, uh, at similar times. I mean, he can't be in different geo geographical locations at the same time. So it's, you know, definitely puts up a red flag. Uh, this is, uh, looks into the event description of a bad uh, unknown username or bad password. What I wanted to type out in this, uh, excuse me, point out in this description is the login type. Uh, that's something with Windows NT that you can query in deeper and actually find out what type of login. And then the next slide actually tells you the type of login. And uh, for example, uh, did he log in from the network? Was he sitting at the console itself? I can't fully answer that. Um, because we, we base our work on an internal network, um, not, not an intranet site or anything like that, we, there wasn't the chance for us to see that, so I can't answer that question. Uh, this is a shortcoming of BindView for Windows NT. Uh, the, the, 
internals of an event are all lumped into one field, so it's hard to, to query specific attributes like log on type with bind view for NT. So this is, although it's a good, it's a great uh, auditing tool um, for Windows NT, it does have some shortcomings. Just wanted to give you a warning. Types of NT logs, uh, you know, we already, we're, we're, we're just talking about the security log, but there's also an application log and a system log. So some of the ways that you can try and get around this are, you know, to, to use a syslog type service and, and pump the logs off to a, a remote server. Um, and then something I, I heard about uh, at Black Hat during the, the HoneyNet presentation is if you, you have a, a network intrusion detection system, uh, Snort was the one used there, and you just have it capturing all of the packets, if you have it see the syslog entries, Essentially, your your IDS is a is a passive logging system, and can and dump out all the syslog events, so you can actually have them in two places beyond just what's on the server itself. So it's something to consider, depending on how much you value these logs. And again, these are the location of the logs, just in case you want to do something with them. Uh, I, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. This is a uh, tool that comes with the NT Resource Kit. Uh, it's, uh, it's made by, it's uh, called Crystal Reports. And it's really good for uh, querying the data within NT logs. It's, it's very robust. You can query uh, archived event logs or, or as it's happening. Yeah, and to do that, um, for those of you that haven't set up auditing on an NT server, you actually, when you're setting up on the event viewer, you set up the properties of, you know, how large each of those three logs that we talked about, um, these three different logs, you said how large they are, uh, when they overwrite, you can set up um, properties to have them um, archived to a different file. And, and that, oops, going the wrong direction here, that's where this comes into play. Of course, this is one machine at a time, excuse me, one server at a time. Uh, the machine, you can set it up for, the, for a halt on, on audit logs full or, or overwrite. Of course, you know, we would like large audit files. Job security. Yeah. This is, again, uh, going through the fields of uh, crystal reports for NT logs. Uh, you can really get granular into the details of, of, the, of the events. And this is a sample report if you want to present evidence to management, et cetera. Now we're going to hit specific Novell netware. Yes. Go ahead. Um, Yes, for, for certain purposes. That would be um, actually if you're doing an audit on the security of Windows NT or you, you want to see something else. But as far as th this, this presentation is geared more towards, okay, you have a network, it's running, it's up. Uh, in our case, it's a very large network. And there's a lot of things that are going on. So you just want to have the servers as much as possible record information so you can look at it at a later date to, to see what's going on in your network or to see if you've got problems. But for doing something like a security audit, yes, um, using, using a loft crack or something like that does have a, a lot of value. Of course, that would fill up logs very quickly. Go ahead. Um, the question was, what, what's the, what is, in our example, the bank calling for retention? And, and that's really, it's a corporate policy set at a high level. Um, I actually don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but that's that's a corporate policy decision. What it looks like for um, going on to looking at Novell, this is the Otacon utility for Novell. This is the first screen. Uh, you can set it up, of course, to have uh, passwords for the, each auditor. And of course, the system administrator would not have that password. No, the Auticon utility works differently. It, uh, its authorization is not based upon 
uh, the NDS rights. It's, uh, it's, it's very good in that perspective. It's, you know, once you get, assign somebody the, the password for AuditCon, they have it, and the administrator's password doesn't override that. It's, it's locked in. And so it, it's very much a separate utility. Okay, so this is the AuditCon screen. It, uh, you can get, it shows you how granular you can get. This is audit by event. And then you pick file events or some other type of event. Yeah, for, uh, to pardon the term, a lot of ways the, the network auditing, the ability to the granularity you have, it's, it's, it's almost an auditor's wet dream in a sense because you can audit just about every single thing that goes on. And, and it, granted, it is a resource hog, and even just auditing a small number of things, the network audit con utility is a resource hog across the network because network is chatty. So this is something you really have to judge based upon your network. You can audit, also audit uh, things that the administrator is doing uh, so to provide a, a oversight of the administrator. Depends what he's doing. Yeah, it, it depends what he's doing. But uh, for example, we've got we've we've got a large network, um, multiple administrators because we've got multiple sites. So an attempt to do that um, because of the, the many containers. I mean, you've got ad container level administrative rights. You've got overall tree administrative rights. So it, it's actually quite a large undertaking to to try and do that to w watch what the administrators are doing. Yeah, and you're absolutely right, but that's some of the contention audit runs into with operations. Like we said earlier, we want to audit everything, um, but operations runs the network, and that's where we can butt heads at times, and decisions have to be made as far as you know. Because all security has a cost, whether it's a real dollars cost or a systems cost. So that's, you know, it's risk management, deciding how much risk you want to accept, how much you, you want to try and mitigate. So. Again, this is looking at the audit con uh, utility, looking at the available audit options. Again, you can look at audit directory services. This is a great change control tool for, for auditing directory services. This is auditing by events. Again, uh, once you drill down to the actual thing you want to audit, it's, a, it's an on-off. This is auditing an a individual user. So again, the, if you want to audit the administrator, you would just pick his, his ID from the screen. Yeah, just turn them on and off. Uh, it's as simple as that. This is, again, our favorite tool, BindView, for Novell auditing. BindView puts all of the attributes of operating systems into databases, as you can see. Uh, and BindView has a, it's a robust tool. It can do it, you know, it can do a lot. But this is just for auditing, not using it. Yeah, it's a really good tool. And when you have a large uh, network enterprise, and if you have mixed four and five, um, BindView is really good as far as being able to query across all the different servers or different containers, getting what you want, really drilling down. Um, it does cost a lot of money, and the licensing is a little strange, but it's it's a very good tool. Yes. For for NT, um, there th are there are some. Most of them, it's based upon really uh, using it, treating it like a syslog service and dumping it off the server, and then just using some sort of standard tool that will go through, comb through your syslogs for certain events. You've got to remember also from an auditor's point of view, uh, we need a tool that we do not have to be administrator to use and run. Uh, so a lot of the, the, the tools out there that are open source, you have to be an, an admin. Again, uh, this is similar to the Crystal Reports tool that you pick your fields, et cetera. Scope is very important with BindView because you can you can run it against uh, ten servers or a thousand servers all at once. Very convenient. Yeah. 
No, 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 no. Not, not for netware. It, it uses uh, BindView uses uh, Novell's native um, query tools to do its uh, work. It's off. There, there are none. You have to set everything on that you want. <laughs> Most of the time, from an auditing point of view, uh, you know, 99% of the time you say, uh, could I see the logs? And there are no logs. This is uh, the audit con tool, what, you, what you'd see if you actually wanted to view the, the events. Uh, it's, it's hard to work with. Uh, that's why we use third-party tools. And again, it's based on event ID, um, similar to NT. Going back one, even if you clear the audit file, this is very important, there's going to be an event that hits the audit log. So we can note if there's any tampering with the audit log, et cetera. What query is to run? Um, this is, you know, if, if you have time, this is a, a sample of some queries to run. Uh, fail, failed login attempts over a threshold, of course. Um, if there's 10 duplicated attempts, et cetera, within a, within a, uh, a short period of time, then you know that uh, something may or may not be going on. And, and this is where the power of BindView comes in really handy um, it, on, a, on a large network, because you can, you can basically program these in, set a batch job to run, and it can just do this, and you can even set it up to run on a, a, a weekly, a monthly basis, what have you, and then, this, then the reports are ready. So you can run them on a weekend when it won't be as critical for your environment, perhaps, and, and then the, you have the information to look at. Again, you always want to look uh, if the audit log was cleared. Uh, for, for NDS, you want to look at uh, creation, deletion of con container uh, objects or tree objects. Abuse of privileges would be like the system admin uh, doing things, um, maybe looking at confidential HR files, you know, that he, that he has the ability to look at but shouldn't be looking at. I'm, I'm unclear how bind you might, how you might write a query and bind you to bind that. Um, you, you'd have to uh, set auditing for that file and then, uh, with the in the event inter, inter, internals like with NT, uh, when you double click on an event like with NT, and you'd actually see the file name that was open. Yeah, it's um, BindView does have a, a a small amount of querying features that you can put in there to to do specific things like this. You can say, okay, um, you know, for the, all the file auditing that we have turned on for administrator X. You know, tell me every time they've accessed this directory or any, any files in this directory, and that's the type of report that you you could write. It's that's why it's down the list. It's not an easy one, not something that you're going to do all the time. You're going to get a lot of pushback, of course, from the administrator when you want to turn this turn these things on. Nobody likes to be under surveillance, I guess. Okay. Uh, Unless there's no questions on this slide, we'll move on. Uh, correlation is also, uh, I, I only can think of four, but I'm sure um, as, as looking at logs grows, as, as regulations like HIPAA, et cetera, come out uh, that says you have to do logging and monitoring. Uh, I see also looking at the market that new tools are coming out and new techniques are coming out for looking at logs. Uh, so this would be the, Again, uh, correlation would be the same person logging into different physical locations of the network at the same time, which is impossible, of course, so it's a red flag. Uh, different people signing into the same machine. Uh, paired events, uh, let's say a person logs on, but you can't see if they logged off ever. So that, that throws up a red flag. Uh, new ideas are people are, I know there's, there's people out there um, looking to correlate logs, uh, logs on the machine, on servers themselves like NetWare uh, with firewalls and uh, uh, network transport layer IDS, et cetera. 
This is something that is either limited only by your creativity or your budget, because in addition to logs, um, we haven't touched host based intrusion detection tools, but there are ones that exist that you can put on these same servers that in a sense take some of this logic for you and do the correlation with other host based intrusion detection systems, possibly with uh, your network intrusion detection system and, and everything. So like I said, it's, it's limited either by your creativity or your budget on, on how well you do this. Okay, bind view for NT and Novell advantages. Uh, this is my favorite administrator access, not needed. Uh, it will run in batch mode, so if you want to run it in the middle of the night, uh, query multiple machines at once, it, it does all the work for you, basically. Uh, bind view itself has application security, so you can, uh, t you can put a password on bind view, so only the auditor can use it, of course. The disadvantage, uh, Sometimes, especially with NT, you have to uh, export the data to a tool like Access or even Excel to, to do more detailed auditing. Again, that was uh, if Bind you group the field into, uh, group the, the details of an event in a, into a single field, it's very difficult to parse it and audit it. Uh, Bind you can notify you if certain events occur, uh, send you an email, etc. And uh, of course, doing Novell and NT with the same tool is very convenient. And, and BindView also has tools for uh, Unix and, Ex and Microsoft Exchange. So not that we're trying to plug them, but just showing one tool that you can use in multiple things on an internal network where you're not doing a lot of web services or things like that. And meets the criteria that an auditor needs. Uh, Crystal Reports, another tool we touched on. An advantage, of course, is more detailed auditing. Uh, Disadvantages, again, administrator access is needed on one machine at a time, very labor intensive. Reports to look at, uh, an after hours report is, is one that you know, should be reviewed on, a, on a, a regular basis. That would be people logging in, logging off, or other events happening in the middle of the night, etc. Uh, creation, creation to legion of objects, um, getting, this is, Touches on change control. Auditors like to know when things are changed and who did them. It's especially important in NDS because, it, and you know, with we we didn't really talk about Windows 2000, but you know, since they do have ADS now, that that type of report on a Windows 2000, much like Netware, is very important because, you know, knowing what objects are created and deleted, um, because I I know for me personally when. I've done some penetration on, on Netware before. The, the first thing you do if you find a misconfigured administrator is you, is you grant yourself some rights and then you, know, you set yourself up another user or, or another way for you to have your rights. And then when you're done, you can delete it. And something like that done in a short, uh, short time frame should set off some, some bells and whistles for you. Next one is a failed file access report. That would be my admin looking at the HR files. Uh, File attribute change report, uh, intruder detection report uh, for Novell. That would be uh, a user being uh, locked out because he tried to log in a bad username and password over over where you'd have intrusion detection set like five times, etc. Trustee assignment changes report. User given supervisor equivalents, uh, etc. Yeah, and the trustee assignment one's another key one because. Much like what I was saying just before about, you know, if, if you do gain rights, um, because of the complexity of NDS, you can, you know, join, you can have a user that's in a group that has administrative rights out of the whole tree or to a container. You can become a trustee of an administrator who's got the rights. So if you become a full trustee of, the, of your administrator, you don't actually have the rights, but because you are the trustee of the administrator, you can make yourself security equal to that administrator at any time you want and turn it off. And so you can toggle back and forth uh, quite frequently. This is specific to no Novell. Uh, bindery password changes report, uh, NDS, the Novell directory system, uh, pass people uh, changing their password in the tree. Uh, changes to the tree that we've already talked about. Uh, NLM modules loaded, unloaded. Volumes mounted, dismounted. 
again, Mike will talk about security equivalencies. NT specific suggested reports are uh, NT groups created, deleted, of course. Uh, NT uh, password changes, NT uh, policy changes, of course, you want to look if somebody's turning on and off the audit logs, you'd, you'd want to you want to know about that. Other considerations that uh, are bleeding edge, I guess you could say, is uh, remote logging uh, and out-of-band logging. Event correlation is what we touched on already. You'll see that in the future. Uh, change control auditing from a protected baseline. Uh, uh, that's, uh, again, looking at change control. That's a real big one for us as auditors uh, because we like to know when things are changing and for what reason. When, you, when you've got a large production environment, um, we, we've got a very formal change control process, and this gives us a tool to go back and see if it's working like it's supposed to be. Because when you have a large distributed network and with, a, with a centralized change control management function, they may approve and disprove when changes are going to go in, but without something to go back and look, you don't know if it's an effective control or not. That is something we would like to do. Um, it has not been implemented at this time, but it would be something that we would love to be able to do. At this point, it would have to be totally separate. Uh, and, and, and again, uh, other types of auditing would be uh, looking at uh, network transfer uh, layer auditing tools. So just, uh, you know, somebody tries to throw, throws a packet at your machine that uh, not a, that with a port you don't have open, et cetera. This is where you get uh, event ID information straight off the manufacturer's website, uh, Novell, that's the document number. Uh, to get the event IDs and uh, NT, you can get some off the uh, website, but they really uh, do get a complete database of them. It comes with the uh, NT resource kit, and that's the file name that comes on the resource kit. It, it's a Microsoft Access database. But if you query Microsoft's knowledge base on their website, you can get a, a pretty decent list of what things are. And it'll well, even they want, you, they want you to buy. <laughs> yeah, obviously they want you to buy the resource kit, but it gives you an idea of you know for each event what are the different parameters that it's going to dump into the log for you. So it, it gives you a little bit of an idea of when you're trying to find something that you haven't seen before. To get more information uh, for NT again, that the AutoCAD help file on the resource kit. Uh, it's just a regular Windows. A help file, but it tells you um, what each option does on the on the native tools, and uh, gives you some description of what each event does. Uh, NTobjectives.com is a good is a good site. Actually, it was a good site uh, because uh, JD Glasner is now a member of Foundstone. The information that used to be on NT Objectives is no longer there, so uh, that's one one thing we need to fix on this. And uh, eventid.net is also has also been very very helpful. Again, uh, there seems to be like a resurgence of people looking at logs. Novell, um, there's a link there for uh, application notes. That's it's it's like a, a book that tells uh, uh, all about the Articon utility and how to use it. It's a PDF file. And uh, oh, by, by the way, in Next to our names inside the the, de the DEFCON brochure, it it uh, it flipped the certification list. Bob's actually a certification whore. That's why he's got a bunch of the uh, the GSEC stuff from SANS. So yeah, this this originated from a SANS paper that they made me write for the GSEC. So if you want to look at that paper, it's at uh, SANS.org. And it's the same long ass title as this presentation. And there's our uh, email addresses if you have any questions on specific events, etc. That's it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Is there any questions?